I'm John Skinner, and this supports several of the chapters in my book, A Season on the Edge. You can find the book at Amazon or at many tackle stores in the Northeast. I'm going to go unedited here for the first couple of minutes. Uh, there'll be a little flakiness with the lighting, but it will settle down after uh, a little bit. Um, all right, so I'm just getting started here. I carry my live eels in a mesh bag. You can see I've got quite a few in there. I'm often optimistic that I'm going to get some action, so I've probably got eight or ten eels in there. I use a piece of burlap rag to handle the eels, and I'll just reach in and uh, grab one. And um, what I'll be doing is getting a firm hold on that eel, and then I will hook it by placing the hook underneath the jaw and coming out just behind an eye socket and you can't see that here but you'll see that uh, pretty soon on the, on the next one since I'm just getting started here I'm going to do some drag adjustments and make sure I have the drag uh, exactly the way I want it I'm standing in about five feet of water, casting it to maybe seven feet of water. So I'm going to start my retrieve as soon as that eel hits the water. Um, I'm going to use a very slow retrieve speed. You can just see it there. And the really important thing to notice here is that I'm going to keep my rod at a high angle. And this is different than if I was fishing a bucktail or a rigged eel. In those cases, I'd be ready to strike. I'd have my rod at a lower angle. But I'm keeping the rod high here, and what I'm hoping to feel are a couple of sharp taps. When I feel those taps, what I'm going to do is drop that rod tip down. I'm going to drop that angle down, and I'm going to try to maintain contact with the eel, but not apply pressure to the eel. If the fish feels that pressure, it could drop it. So I'm going to, there it is, I'm going to drop that tip, and I'm going to set the hook. All right, I'm going to be quiet and let this play out. I weighed that fish on my boga grip and it went 32 pounds. Now it's time for the release. And I fought that fish. I always fight fish aggressively and uh, it really goes a long way towards being able to release the fish successfully. Uh, still, uh, I need to spend a little time on this fish and uh, try to get some water flowing over its gills. And uh, the fish is in excellent condition. It should have no trouble taking off. And um, the fish will let you know when it wants to go. Let's watch. I'm hooking this eel right underneath the jaw and out behind an eye socket. This is a 7-0 Gamagatsu octopus hook. It's on three feet of 50 pound test fluorocarbon and there's a small barrel swivel that joins that fluorocarbon to the 30 pound test braid that I'm using as the main line.
the weather's really going downhill here, so we're going to have to deal with a little bit of water on the lens and hearing rain hitting the camera. Okay, I want to focus on the hook set on this one. When I get those sharp taps, I'm going to drop that rod all the way parallel to the water, and then I'm going to strike multiple times. I'm going to hit this fish over and over again, one, two, three, four, five times, maybe more. And if I can keep drilling that hook in, that's what I'm going to keep doing. Big stripers have very hard mouths, and a good hook set is crucial. And I'm almost uh, obsessive about getting a good hook set. And no stretch line, razor sharp hooks, a very firm hook set. Uh, this is all part of that, and this is really one of the most important factors in converting those strikes on the eels to landed fish. I fish with my drag nearly locked until I hook up with the fish. When I set that hook, I don't want the drag slipping. Um, these fish, they don't tend to explode into a run as soon as you hit them. You have a little bit of time between when you set the hook and when the fish takes a run. And if I need to, I'll back down a little bit on the drag. But before I hook that fish, that drag is almost completely locked so that there's no slippage on the hook set. So this is live unweighted eel casting. On my YouTube channel I have a video on fishing rigged dead eels and both techniques are extremely effective on big bass. So if you haven't seen that video I encourage you to watch that one as well. I'm on the North Fork of Long Island east of Manitouk in a very large boulder field. One of my challenges here is to uh, avoid getting cut off on rocks. I mean, the water's actually, the tide is up uh, a little bit. It's not low tide. It's up a couple of hours and if this was low tide you would see even a couple more rocks pointing out of the water uh, in front of where I'm fishing. So uh, I always fight fish aggressively. I have to be even a little more careful here. And the tackle I'm using is not overly heavy at all. This is a Lama Glass GSB 121L blank, so that's a 10 foot graphite blank um, that I've cut one foot from the butt, and so it's a 9 foot rod. And uh, Vanstall 230 pound test spider wire stealth braid. These fish actually take pretty nice runs, but I've silenced my drag by removing the spring on the bottom of the spool. Anyone who fishes the North Fork probably recognizes that I'm uh, fighting quite a bit of current right now trying to pull this fish towards me. I've mentioned that I fight these fish aggressively, but if you'll notice, um, at the end of the fight, I ease up quite a bit because this is at a point that um, it's really a judgment call as to when I'm going to actually land that fish and I'm being careful. Uh, the fish is somewhat tired. Sometimes it's hard to tell how tired that fish is and I just put myself in a position that if the fish wants to lunge, I'm going to be able to you know, accommodate that lunge without breaking the line. Uh, probably the best example of that is uh, on that first fish, uh, on that 32 pounder where you know, I eased up and it still made a couple of explosions in tight to the rock but that was no problem and then it just slid up on the rock uh, very easily. Probably the biggest challenge for me to get this video was to do it during the day and to have enough daylight to actually get video. Um, most of this eel fishing, the very vast majority, is done at night. In fact, the largest fish from this trip came after it was too dark to get any usable video and uh, that was a 34 pounder that hit two-thirds of an eel. A bluefish had chopped the back of the eel off but uh, you can still keep fishing those and you know they're, they're still productive. Oh, 
So I realized pretty quickly that that was a bluefish hitting my eel, so I'm just cranking that out of there as fast as I can to try and save the eel. And sure enough, looking at this eel, I can see the chop marks on the back, but it's still in pretty good shape. I'm going to put it right back out there. Normally I would wait a little bit, uh, you know, even half a minute to get the bluefish out of there, but uh, there's enough bass around, I'm going to throw again. I wasn't able to turn that fish right away, so now it's taking a run, and that's not a good situation for me because I've got rocks just below the surface of the water out there. So that fish cut me off. That's just part of doing business in a rocky area like this. Okay, I hope you found this uh, useful and uh, entertaining, and thanks for watching.